on the Huff Express with Inside Wash, and I'm with Fit for Autopsy. How are you guys doing? Good, good, good. Good, good. Yeah, yeah. good. You yeah. do, you're fresh from your show across the road at Club Eagle Bar. Yeah. yeah. How was that tonight? It was awesome. good. Too yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, good time. Uh, good amount of people, lots of energy. Everybody was really excited to see us play, and it, uh, it was a good time. It sounded great. The sound guy was really cool. Good day. Was loud. loud. Yeah, yeah, super loud. loud. Loud's always good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, what kind of things like, you know, say you're, it's live and stuff and it's a good show, what makes a really good show? And the guys? people are super into it. Like, it doesn't matter how many people we're playing in front of. Like, if, if, like, we, I don't know, I don't know how many people were there, but it's a small club, small venue, but, like, everybody was banging their head. Everybody was, like, being real loud in between songs. It was the good. Energy. So, like, the energy is really yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Last night, too. Last night was crazy, too. Like, just tiny little rooms packed with people or... You know, it's like Joe said, it doesn't matter how many people are there, but it to me, I'd rather play a small club with 100, 150 people going crazy than play a huge club with like, you know, 1,500 people staring at me like I'm, you know, like, what is this guy doing here? Yeah. So it's, it's like a happy medium sometimes, you get it both, but I'll tell you what, you know, Europe and the UK have been great to us so far. It must be amazing as well, because you were saying earlier that this is only the second time you guys have been to the UK, and yeah. to be having yeah. a really good reception and shows you're really enjoying must be yeah. Yeah. You know, People great. have been reacting very well. Like, this is my first time over here. This is the mm -hmm. band's second time over here. So I can't imagine how the first time was. They were probably, you guys were on a pretty big tour before. Yeah, right? it wasn't, you know, it's one of those things where when you come over as a support band, so like we came over Suicide Silence, The Artist Murder, like it's a fail safe. The shows are going to be great every night. Kids are going to go crazy. You're going to sell, you know, tons of merch because there's tons of people. But the truth of the matter is, is it wouldn't have mattered who was on that tour. We brought out a few people, but the majority <coughs> of people were there for the, the bands that are headlining, you know, the bigger bands. But when we come back and we play to kids that maybe saw us there or maybe heard us on the Internet and are excited to see us play, it's for us, like, directly. So it's this kind of different feeling where it's like, Maybe I'm not playing in front of 700 kids tonight, but this room full of 100 kids are so stoked that we're here. Yeah. You know, that means a lot to us. So it's, it's real sick, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, thank you to Suicide Silence and Dyer Does Murder mm -hmm. for taking us out and giving us a chance to be here again because if we didn't come the first time with them, we wouldn't be here now. It you was know? a good spot for us. Yeah. yeah, very, very good move. And, you know, unfortunately, Joe wasn't there. And I feel like if Joe was there, there would have been a much different response to that tour for us because Joe was super powerful and good at commanding the crowd and we had a guy filling in last time so it wasn't quite as fluid as it is now but you know it's, it was good enough to get us to where we're at so so would you say like on this tour too that releases like the track's just out you've got the depression sessions coming up soon you're doing this headline tour you kind of like settled as a band you know with yourself as the front man do you feel mm. like this tour is kind of cementing you guys as you really hope to go forward I hope so oh yeah I hope so Hell yeah. I mean, that's the plan yeah. I mean <laughs> everything that we've ever done as a band has always been to you know further it to push you know it's always baby steps but we feel like um, we feel like we took a real big step when we put out Absolute Hope, and we did some of the right tours, and now with the Depression Sessions coming out, you know, again, Casey String and the Art, like, you know, to thank those guys for you know working with us because they, they don't have to do that, you know, they did it because we all like each other, but that's gonna help us, you know, to be lined up with bands that are doing better than us. So everything has gotten us here, but for sure. We're taking bigger steps now, and I mean, being on radio shows with people like you, all the, every little thing helps. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, the depression sessions, like you were just speaking about, it's quite a cool concept. You know, it's three bands working on one album, yeah. one individual track each, and then one cover track each. What was it like working on a project like that? Because I haven't seen something similar. To that. We were all in like the same in the studio at the same time doing it too. Yeah, that's crazy. That's, cool. That must be a hell of a Yeah, we were part. each in different rooms, and it was fun. Doing my drums cool. at the same time that I was watch the other drummers do their thing. Yeah. Like, that's sick. It's crazy. It's I a lot of fun. Up now. Like, yeah. That's pretty cool, you know? Like, I think the kids sick. are really going to be psyched on it because, like, when was the last time there was, like, a really cool split? Like, you know, personally for me, if this was, like, a year and a half ago before I was even in this band and I heard this shit was coming out, <laughs> yeah. I was freaking out because, like, my three favorite bands. Yeah. So, yeah. They're fucking sick, so. The coolest thing I think about all of this in general is, like, it's like they said, we were in the studio with these bands, so it's like, not only, but we'll start like this, 
when there's a split. Usually it's like a band records at one studio, another band at another, and then you do your tracks, and one guy will mix and master it, so it kind of all sounds the same, and then you put it out. Yeah. But this was recorded and produced by the same guy, mm-hmm. and with the same idea, and I mean, it's him and Marsh from Thy Art, really, it's like their brainchild, they came up with the concept, and like, from everything from the artwork to the music, to the way the lyrics are written, are it's all kind of it coincides. So there's more to it than just the idea of three bands doing something together. It's like three bands actually creating a record under the same roof with the same vibe and the same feelings. I like, know. And we had been to- all of us toured together last year, at, you know, at one point or another. Yeah. And it, it's just friends. And then there's the idea of like you hear that guy play this cool thing, this cool way, and you're like. I gotta keep up with that. So then you get pushed to work harder, and like, there's so many cool, interesting things about this split that people don't maybe grab onto right away. That it's it's gonna be it's gonna be surprising. The original songs from each band are like, in my opinion, some of the best work that any of us have done. Yeah. And it's definitely the next step for Fit for an Autopsy. Like you can hear the natural progression into what our next record's gonna sound like. Which we may or may not already be working on, and um, so you know we're taking this step. But then the cover songs are cool too because it shows Joe's ability to be influenced by somebody that we've all listened to, and he killed that Nine Inch Nails track. Killed it. I've got to ask this: like, it's weird, like quite often I ask bands, you know, who your influences as you were growing up, you know, because yeah. obviously that has like almost not a direct correlation. Michael Jackson. You- Michael Jackson. 100%. But like, Michael Jackson and Kiss. Kiss. Like, like, everyone says Michael Jackson, but it's kind of, you know, I'll ask that and as you can see it in their music, but then to release a track where you can see, this is me, and this is who got me to be me. Yeah. Kind of together on an album, it's, for it's, three different bands who are all friends, is really interesting. Talking about drumming perspective and why we chose something like that, I was born in 85, so I was a kid in the 90s, always looking for the heavier drumming. If you understand drumming and you listen to Nine Inch Nails, it's pretty heavy. And we are in a heavy band, so we were curious about seeing or trying how to make <coughs> those songs that we like heavy or heavier. And bands like Nine Inch Nails and Marilyn Manson were bands that I was influenced by when I was a kid because that was easy, easy to access. You know, it was on TV compared to the more underground music that you had to work to find. And that's something that some of us had in common. Like, we were trying to find a 90s band that was heavy enough to compare, you know, like, that we all felt, like, kind of influenced by. Mm-hmm. And it was just something that we found. You know, it made sense at the time. And when we heard the, the, the final product, we were, <laughs> we were happy. I am happy. I know yeah, the guys. I are, think it know. came out really cool. I thought it was, like, super weird because, like, I mean, I'm the youngest guy in the band, I guess, right? Now yeah. At this point. Yeah. So, like, I... I wasn't really like a huge, I wasn't huge into Nine Inch, I knew a couple things and like I never heard this song and when I heard it, I was interested but I was like, man, I don't know how this is going to translate and then once we got the music down and I've been like practicing and listening to the song over and over endlessly every day and then I heard what we did musically, I was like, hmm, yeah, I'm going to have to start listening to that just so I can see where like, where our heads were just writing that. There is a lot of music that is heavy and can be heavy without people having to be screaming or yeah, guitar yeah. super distorted sure. or drums super a... overproduced and it's it's our job to I think to find those things. No, definitely. And I think it's a huge misconception quite often in the metal like like I know a lot of people who not to say play metal music but listen to metal music will go to certain songs and go, Are you guys not heavy? Yeah. And stuff like well, just I mean, because they're not the cliche heavy, heavy is a, heavy, which is a perception. Is. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. a, per- a perception. It's something that that you feel, you know what I mean? Like I listen to some like hip hop, like rap and stuff like that sometimes, and I'm like, I can hear the grooves that are going on and the timing that they use, and the way the words move over the music, and you're like, man, this is this is heavy, you know? Like there's a groove here, and to me, and I know Hosein agrees, like my favorite bands are groovy heavy bands, like bands like Mashuga and Gojira yeah. and Candiria, and like all these bands that have this like driving, almost like tribal drum. Like old Sepultura and like all that stuff had this thing that I think a lot of bands now they just kind of tune low and chunk away and they play fast and 
it's it's heavy for what it is. I, I, come but, I was yeah. born and raised in the Caribbean. That means that it's a super rich back, uh, musical background influenced by African music and salsa and reggae and all these things. All those types of music may dance, makes dance thousands of people at the same time because of the amount of groove involved in it. It's super heavy when you see a lot of people, scenes of people, the same amount of people that go to big festivals in Germany and all these places, but in another scenario, doing the same moves, jumping or dancing on the same groove, that's heavy for me right? to listen to those kind of patterns and people dancing and moving to it. It's yeah. equal as headbanging for me, you know. Yeah. Like so, but that's just perception you know, yeah. of what heavy can yeah. be. Heavy, heavy to me isn't, you know, isn't always a guy screaming into a microphone. Sometimes just the lyrical content mm -hmm. can make a song like a band like Radiohead. Like I've been listening to that band since I was a kid, you know, and there are some lyrics. That, that are in that stuff that make me feel awful sometimes because of the way that it, it makes my brain move. It's not always about the music for me. And um, to me, well, I see the music, I mean, it's not always about the instruments for me. No, sometimes no, it's the mood of the music. It's always the moment when you first listen to a song. Yeah. I know that's a big thing for me. I mean, music marks a time in your life. You, you can listen to a song and be like, holy shit, I was like, like Beastie Boys License to Ill, that record. Every time I hear that record, I, I literally think about being in the fifth grade, summertime, outside, at school, and hearing that, you know, that Paul Revere track, that, you know, that something about the way that that song sounds, it just reminds me of being a kid, you know, and I'm 40 and I still get the same feeling when I hear it. So, you know, people can say what they want to say about music, but it's the most important thing. It's the one thing that ties people together. It has, you know, religion uses music, you're happy, you're sad, you know, there's celebration. It all revolves around rhythm. I, I think know? almost everyone listens to music on a daily basis. Think about how many people are driving or at, at their work <laughs> just listening to music in the background because it helps them to be a little bit more relaxed in their task or, yeah. or when you get home and you're tired about your whole day, you get a beer. With some music, yeah. and you have to do the dishes anyways, but like, <laughs> well, the music helps, like, I think, almost, I yeah. think almost yeah. everyone sure. listens to music, and music changes people, too. They subconsciously don't even yeah. know it either, that's music, how much it actually helps them. Sure. Music changes people, there's Motivation. music therapy, there's people that are healed because of music, and yeah. there's... And I mean, let's face it, you break up with your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your husband or your you wife. Have a song to you have a sad to song. Yeah. You know, dashboard <laughs> confessional exists for a reason. You Everybody know what I mean? Everybody's got their thing and like, you know, sometimes I'm feeling dark and moody and I want to listen to Fiona Apple and like it's just the way that my mind works. <clears throat> there are no limits to what makes you feel. And Nine Inch Nails is now we're back in a circle. Beautiful. Nine Inch Nails is one of those bands that I remember when I was a kid and I listened to Pray Hate Machine. And, and I was just like blown away and then downward spiral and like all these different records came out and you know Trent Reznor is just like he's a genius I think he's a genius singing. you know and I mean hell look at it like like Casey Strain did Black Hole Sun and that's you know that's that same era of music like you know this whole like when bands were bands and they Soundgarden, Soundgarden. That's a super heavy band too yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know and I mean not for nothing, but you know, Du Hast is it's a heavy groovy song too. It's Ramstein's like, band, like yeah. it's just one of those things. So it's the whole record's really cool. And it's it's kind of a when you read it lyrically, I mean uh, did you watch the Die Art video? I haven't yet, no. I kind of um, waiting to all right, so here's, myself on it all. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. Okay. It's sad as shit. It's a really sad thing. Like you gotta put yourself in the mood when you sit down that prepare yourself when you read the lyrics like it's gonna move you in a way that at least we hope that like there's a reason why it's called the depression sessions there's a reason why we do what we do all of our lyrics are about more than just like you know some guy with a knife chasing a chick through the woods like we we write about like really scary shit like you know people and the way we treat each other and where our world is headed really yeah, yeah. nothing is scarier than the truth it doesn't matter what what do you believe in outside there's certain things happening it doesn't matter how you see the world it doesn't matter what religion you choose to follow it doesn't matter 
there's things that are happening no matter what. You can't stop it. And it's reality because it is happening. And yeah, I think some people don't like to hear it, but I think it needs to be exposed because we need to change it. I think there's been a dip as well. Like up until recently, the past few years, it, so music's become very political again. Like I remember a while it has ago, to. you know, it, I feel no, like there's been a resurgence, but there's mm. been like an like an open political, like a political. I feel like maybe it's a little they, smarter wasn't. political. I a lot think of the people, heavier scene a lot of people are pissed off. I think people are angry yeah. again. People are angry again, and yeah. it, you know, it's like there's a lot of stupid shit going on. There's a exactly. lot of a break. Look at the. Uh, yeah rat race that's going on in the yeah. US right now. Let me say, it's fucking disgusting. Let me say something to everybody listening. And this is very important. Everybody watching. America is at, the United States of America is in a really weird spot right now. And please believe that a large majority of us are not happy with the way that things are going. I know we've been asked multiple times about just people meeting us, finding out we're from the US and asking about our political stance. Mm -hmm. Read our lyrics. Look at our music. Look at what we stand for. Look at the things that we do. You know, like we caught, we did a shirt for um, the Syrian refugees with IRC recently, and we caught backflack from that. We don't give a shit. We do what we want. You know, we did a shirt for um, American soldiers for, and and not just the soldiers, but for um, anybody who's experiencing PTSD. Yeah. And we did it. We did something for that. Like. We believe, yeah, we, yeah, I mentioned that. We believe that there is a way to help each other. And maybe people think our music is just pissed off and angry, but we have a message, and that message is that we're in a state of, you know, uh, disarray everywhere in the world. And the only way we're going to get past it is if we're honest and we put the truth out. So please, like, don't think that we don't know what's going on in our own country and don't think that we don't know what's going on in the world like we get it and you know like we can't necessarily change anything or do anything but we also don't agree with all the things that are going on so you know believe in the fact that the American people are aligned with a lot of the ideals that are going on in the rest of the world and we are we're pretty screwed right now with our political race and a lot of things that are going on. So I just wanted to say that because I've been questioned multiple times and I've had people say some pretty off color and, and weird things and I won't, I'm not going to get into it, but I've gotten into like small debates with people because I'm not afraid to speak my mind on it. And, um, you know, people think Americans are like these, you know, crazy gun toting, like, you know, insane people for some reason or another, but you know, like, we're right with the rest of the world right now. And it's so, only a stereotype. Yeah. Like everything yeah. else. You it's know? another yeah. thing walked by the media. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll listen to and read the BBC just to kind of get a little bit of outside influence. But I can see how the same way our stuff gets pigeonholed into certain things, you guys get fed certain things too. Especially after the recent thing with Europe and the yeah. EU and stuff. Yeah. We're yeah. in a kind of scary place at the moment as well where we don't yeah. know where the hell think about our Think about our job. Like, think about what we do. We this travel. This is what's so worrying now is the effect yeah. it's going to have on the music culture. You know, how easy is it going to be? You know, you guys were in Amsterdam the other day. Yeah. How easy is it going to be for you guys to do, you know, just hop yeah. Is that still going to be there? I mean, that's I mean, something sure... that I mean, my culture and people I'm around are really like, what's going to happen? I mean, even, you know, that the freedom of any people moving around. Yeah. You yeah. know, that's yeah. the really worrying thing. That's why we have to change. Yeah. Okay, we have to work on that and think about that, too. Like, exactly. it's. it's having to, they're forcing us to have to think, they're forcing you to have to think, they're forcing us to have to think, and it's our job to think, exactly. to change it, because we're getting older, obviously, and we yeah. want to be in a cool place, and we want certain things to be different, and it's already been different, like, if you compare yourself to your grandfathers and your dad, and all that, we've changed things, and we obviously think different. We're getting older and learning new things and learning ways to change it, obviously. And as scary as it sounds, I think change it's scary because it's, you know, change means different. Yeah. And we're not used to it, but it's the only way things are going to change. If, if something drastic happens and then we have to figure out something from that. Yeah. And sometimes we have to take it to the extremes to build ourselves up again. Okay. It's no different for... Uh, 
than us being super sad because we broke up with our partner and we don't know what to do and we think we, we, that's the end of it and then we have to figure out ways to how to build ourselves again. Yeah. Go imagine that in a gigantic scale around the globe. That's, yeah. that's, that's it. Like. And at the end of the day, I mean, it's all the same thing. We wake up, we eat, we go to work, we support our families, we have kids and wives and husbands and you know mothers and fathers and grandparents and we you know we want to be able to tuck our kids in at night and you know we need we need some community back and like you know not having to worry about your kids playing in your own backyard and there's so many crazy things but at the, at the end of it it's just everybody's go we're doing the same thing every day. it's good to work you as know? an individual and with yourself but it's also super important to work as a community yeah because we all need each other to be able to survive. And people forget about that. But like, when you get sick, you go to a doctor. When your car breaks down, you go to the mechanic. When you... So we need to work as a community. You know? like, and everybody does different things. So we need to figure that out too, because everybody thinks that they're the only thing. And not really. You know what I'm saying? All right. This is, we've we've gone off on a crazy stuff. That's, that's what we write about. Yeah. I like that. That's something good. You know, getting to speak about stuff that's been bubbling up under the surface for a long time. Yeah. Fit for an autopsy. Fit for an autopsy. Thank you so much for speaking to me. Yeah. yeah. No, Thank do you have any other questions that you want to ask? I mean, no, we've got to spun out. No, so. I'm good. That was amazing. Cool. I mean, do you have any questions for me? Awesome. No. Yeah. When can we come back and play this place? This place looks sick. As soon as possible. What is it? What's the name of it? Fuel. Fuel, Fuel Fuel Night. Fuel my club. They have Iron Maiden beers. I Iron love Maiden Iron Maiden. There's Iron Maiden stuff all over the place. You should see That's some of That's sick. Yeah. It's great. Thank yeah. you. He paid for it. He did. Oh, yes. Okay. And thank Just you for giving up. us an opportunity to, you know, speak our minds. And we appreciate you taking some time with us. It's cool. Anytime. It's fun. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome.